Hi, Russ here, and uh, in this video, I'm just going to have a quick look at macros. Now, for a lot of people, macros is kind of a place in Word which where they don't actually want to go, but the reality is that they can make your life a whole lot easier. Now, all a macro is, is a set of pre-recorded steps that we can do in Word or Excel and PowerPoint and things like that, okay? There's nothing to be scared of them, and they're really, really easy to use. Now, in this worksheet document that I've got to open at the moment, it's, it's something that we're working on or I'm working on for our next book. Basically, uh, after I put all the content in, I then tweak the styles a little bit and it's given me some extra room on the page. Now, as you can see here on the right hand side, we have these two blank rows at the bottom and I want to add these two blank rows basically to every single table um, above this because I now have this extra room. Now I can go through and I can put my cursor in there and I can tab, 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 tab and do it like that. Or because I'm tabbing each time, then I can just record a quick macro to do all of this. Now there are a number of ways we can do this. The, the first way is if you've got the developer tab shown up here on the ribbon. Now if you haven't got the developer tab showing, right click on the ribbon, select customize ribbon and on the right hand side here you'll see that. And then you can just put a tick in there, click on OK and then the developer tab will show. The other easier way to do it is down here at the bottom on your status bar you have this little macro button here and I can record this macro. Now if I click on that it will come up and it'll say record macro and it's saying macro 4 because there's been three macros in this document recorded prior to this and then I can assign that to a button or to a keyboard or I can just click on OK and start recording the macro. But before I do this I want to make sure that my cursor is in the right place and everything's kind of kind of right because what happens when I start to record the macro is Word will record all my on-screen actions. It won't record mouse clicks but it'll record keyboard actions and things like that. So I'll just do cancel. I'll make sure that my cursor is in the end cell here. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see and what I'm going to do now is if I'm, I can click there or I can come up here onto the toolbar ribbon and record macro. It just does, it does the same thing, it takes me to the same dialogue. And I'm going to call this macro 4 and then all I do is click on OK. And then as you can see here on the ribbon we have the various recording options, pause, stop, etc, macro security which we don't need. But you'll also notice the macro button down here on the status bar has changed to like the it's recording, okay? But nothing's actually happening on screen. Um, because I haven't done anything yet. Now, when I mouse over, you can see that I've got that little cassette recorder from a from a day gone by, and it's waiting for me to do some actions. So, what I need to do is I want to tab, and then I can do tab, 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 and then tab again. And that's what I want to do. That's all that this macro is going to do. Very, very simple. I click to stop, and if, if you remember, this was macro 4. So if I click on the Visual Basic and go to Macro 4, I can see that it's recorded the steps. The first step was move right one cell. And then there were six more tabs, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then it created that second extra row. And that's effectively all this macro is doing. Now, I go back to my document and I want to test this macro out. So I go to the next table, put my cursor where I want to go, click on macros, and I've got quite a few in this document, but it's macro 4, remember. And then I click on run, and that's what happens. And then I go to macros, and then I go to macro 4, and I click on run. Very, very easy, straightforward, works a treat. However, going back to macros and all that all the time is really, really laborious and I've got quite a few tables to do. Now if my VBA skills were great I could record a macro which will actually go through the tables and then add this to every table. However I'm going to do it on an individual basis because we want to keep it simple. So what I do now is I right click on the blank space in my ribbon, click customize ribbon and then what I want to do is go to popular commands and then there I can see macros. So I'm going to click on that 
And then what I'm looking for is macro four. So this one here is just telling me that this is the path to that macro. And I'm not going to add it to my ribbon. What I want to do is add it to my keyboard shortcut. So I click on customize. And now it's going to make me do all of this again. And the macros command, or the macros area is right down the bottom here. And I click on that. Then I want to find macro four. And I want to use, I want to assign a shortcut key to it. So I want to make things easy for me. And the one I love using, and this is my, this is the shortcut key that I use all the time is control Q. And it'll tell me that it's assigned to macro three because I kind of recorded this earlier. Um, but then decided that I was going to record a video showing you. So now I want to assign that to macro four. Then I click on close. Then I click on OK. So now that macro is assigned to a shortcut key. So I place my cursor there. And if you remember, the shortcut key is control Q. And I go to the next one, control Q. I need to sort that table out. Control Q, control Q, control Q, control Q. And see how much time this is just, this is saving me just by doing a simple macro, which takes seconds to do. Now, once I've finished with a document, I now have a number of choices. I can come up here and if I want, I can copy that and save the macro. I can even change the macro here, like in, insert, change the macro name, sorry. Go to um, insert, insert two rows. And then what I would do is I would copy that and then I would save that into a text file in my VBA folder just in case I wanted to reuse this. The macro above here uh, is the exact same one that I've just recorded, but I've just made it a little bit better. And I do that by dimension, we'll do, say, we'll do dimension, yeah, dimension X as the integer, because if you remember this one adds the first row, and then we want to put in a four next to four. X equals one to six, because we only want six tabs. And then we tell it what to do. And then we next X. So rather than it run through those lines, it just keeps the code nice, nice and easy. And that will do the exact same thing. If I go back to the document and try Control Q, it won't work anymore because I've renamed the macro. Okay, so what I have to do is I have to set it up again, but this time I'm going to put it on my quick access toolbar. So right click, quick access toolbar, again, macros, scroll down, but this time I'm looking for insert two rows. And I'm going to add that at the end there. Click on OK, and you can see it's now been added to my quick access toolbar. So now if I want to run this, I can do and it will run perfectly. However, I don't want to be using my mouse, I want to be using my keyboard. So with a quick access toolbar, the beauty of this is you press the Alt key, and it gives you the shortcut number, which in this case is nine. So I do Alt nine, come to the next one, Alt nine. Personally, I prefer Control Q because it's easier for me. So I customize ribbon, come back here, go to macros, insert two rows, assign the shortcut key and there we go. That's how to use macros. Thanks a lot.